Introduction to the Practice of Statistics. There will be two lesson objectives. Number one, define statistics and statistical thinking. Number two, explain the process of statistics. Lesson objective number one, why do we need statistics? This is a nice quote from the Chronicle of Higher Education. Statistical thinking supports decision making under conditions of uncertainty and inescapable condition of modern life. This is something that we'll all be doing no matter what our job. Statistics is used in many, many careers. Here is just an example of a few. So what is statistics? Statistics is the science of collecting, organizing, summarizing, and analyzing information to draw conclusions or to answer questions. In addition, statistics is about providing a measure of confidence in any conclusion. The information referred to in this definition is data. Data describe characteristics of an individual. For example, in the student survey, your height, your age, how far you live away from Cincinnati State, all are examples of data. A key aspect of data is that it varies. Is everyone in our class the same height? No. Does everyone have the same hair color? No. So among individuals, there's what we call variability. There's also variability amongst ourselves. Do we sleep the same number of hours each night? No. Do you eat the same number of calories a day? No. Does it take you the same amount of time to get to school? No. One goal of statistics is to describe and understand sources of variability. Here's three medical questions that can be answered with the aid of statistics. Does the regular use of aspirin reduce the incident of heart attacks? Does the use of a handheld cell phone cause brain tumors? A low-carb diet versus a low-fat diet, which is better for those wanting to lose weight? We will answer these in this class. Lesson objective number two. We'll start with some definitions. The first one, population. Population is the entire group of individuals to be studied. A sample is a subset or part of the population that's being studied. And an individual is a person or object that is a member of the population being studied. So the smallest is an individual. Group of individuals make a sample and a sample is part of the population. Now, as we'll learn in this class, the best type of sample is a sample that is representative of the population. There's two branches of statistics. The first one is being descriptive statistics and the second being inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics, as the name implies, it describes data from a sample. This is done by the use of tables, graphs, and what's called numerical summaries. A statistic is a numerical summary based upon a sample. So a statistic is a number that is measuring something from a sample. Now to keep this straight, this is the way I like to think about it. A statistic starts with an S, a sample starts with an S. So anything that's measuring something from a sample is a statistic. Inferential statistics uses methods to take results from a sample and then extend them to a population to make inference, in other words. And it also measures the reliability of the result. A parameter is a numerical summary of a population. So a parameter measures something about a population. And again, if we notice, population starts with a P, parameter starts with a P. So again, a parameter is some kind of measurement on a population. Let's look at an example. Suppose the percent of all students in your campus who have a job is 84.9%. Is that a parameter or a statistic? It is a parameter because it is a numerical summary of a population. We know it's a population because in the word here, all is the key word. Suppose a sample of 250 students is obtained, and from this sample, we find that 86.3% have a job. Now, that is a statistic because it is measuring something about a sample. And again, we know it's a sample because it is, it's told to us. Here's the four steps of the process of statistics. Number one is to identify the research objective, and normally this is uh, what the researcher is trying to answer. The second step is we collect the data that is needed to answer the question in step one. Normally this is done using a sample as to use an entire population is very difficult and expensive. The third step is we describe the data. And we describe the data by either tables, graphs, and numerical summaries. And the last step, number four, is to form inference, where we take the results from the sample and we make 
inference for the population. Let's look at an example. You may need to pause. Okay, in this example, we saw all four steps in our statistical process. Uh, step one, the research objective was the researcher believes that males accused of hitting their female partners are less likely to do it after going through the 40-hour Peters treatment program as opposed to just doing 40 hours of community service. The question is, is does the battering treatment program help reduce the number of males who batter? Second step, we collected the data needed to answer the question. So they were selected into two groups. Group one received the treatment, that was the batterer program. Group two received 40 hours of community service and that was the control group. Six months after the program ended, the percent of males that hit their female partners was determined. Step number three, organize and summarize the information. The demographical characteristics of the subjects in this experimental and control group were similar. So after six months, 21% of the males in the control group further battering incidences, while 10% of the males in the treatment group had further battering incidences. Step four, we draw conclusions from the data. So we extend the results from this sample to all males who batter their female partner. That is, males who batter their female partner and participate in the batter treatment program are less likely to do it again. Thank you for watching.